In this video, we're going to be looking at the final topic of GCSE biology, and that is ecology. If you've made it this far and you've watched all my other biology videos, thank you very much. It has helped me out a lot. Here are some of the subtopics we're going to be looking at throughout this video in a bit more depth. And as always, all of these pages will be available on my Etsy page to buy. So thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the video. First of all, we have some key definitions I want to clear up before we get started on the main notes. Habitat is a place where an organism lives. Population are all the organisms of a species in a habitat. An easy way to remember this is think of like a population of the world is how many humans live on it. It's exactly the same thing. Community is all the populations of different species in a habitat. Abiotic factors are non-living factors of the environment and biotic factors are the living ones. And then finally, an ecosystem is the interaction of a community of biotic organisms with their abiotic features. So how the living and non-living things interact with each other. Next, we have competition. Organisms compete for resources to survive. And more specific examples of this include that plants need light, water and space to live and animals need space, food, water, and also mates to reproduce with. Looking more into those biotic and abiotic factors, biotic factors include things like new predators, prey, competition for resources, and new diseases, so again, all living things that could affect all these organisms. And abiotic factors include things like light intensity, temperature, carbon dioxide or oxygen, and moisture level. Now, I know for a fact there are many more abiotic factors, so if you can think of any, let me know down below in the comments. Next, we have adaptations. There are three different types of adaptations, behavioural, structural and functional. Starting off on the left-hand side with behavioural, it is just the way an organism behaves. So an example of this would be the way birds migrate to warmer climates in winter. And again, throughout any of these adaptations, if you can think of any more examples, Please let me know down below in the comments as it will help a lot of other people as well. Next, moving on to structural features of an organism's body structure. And again, examples of this. Whales have a layer of blubber for warmth. Camels have a larger surface area to volume ratio to help heat escape. And again, the more examples of these you have, the better. And finally, functional adaptations. So this is the functions that happen within an organism to help them. So bears hibernate to slow their metabolism in the winter and desert animals produce less sweat to keep the heat in. Again, let me know if you have any down below in the comments. Food chains. So food chains, I've just written a little key underneath the word food chains, and the green arrows on the diagram indicate the biomass transfer between each of the stages, or the trophic levels. So starting off the producer is, an example is grass, and this is trophic level one, where there is 100% of the biomass. When the rabbit comes along to eat that grass, the biomass is transferred into the rabbit, but 30%, as an example, is lost in that transfer through digestion and other processes like that. And then finally, when we get onto the predator, so the fox would then maybe eat the rabbit, that biomass has been reduced to 40%. And these values are purely estimates. In reality, there's probably a lot less biomass that's transferred across. But again, understanding many examples of different food chains or food webs is going to really help you in those exams. And up in the top right, we have a predator-prey cycle graph. So what this shows is the population of predators and preys and how they differ from each other throughout time. So you can see, first of all, the prey will be high. The predators will then eat those prey. So the prey population dips. As that prey population dips, this means that eventually the predators are going to run out of food. And because of that, the predator population, it has a bit of a time lag on it, but the predator population will dip as well. And then because the predator population has dipped, the prey will end up spiking again with their population. And so because of that, the predators will then spike as well. And as long as the rest of the environment stays stable, this cycle will then just continue. Next, we have the water cycle. I thought it was easiest just to explain the water cycle with a simple diagram. You can choose any part of this water cycle to start on. Let's go with precipitation. So there's big clouds in the sky. It rains down on the hills or the valleys and the water then goes all the way down to the sea or it gets taken up by the trees and other plants. 
Through a process called transpiration, where the water goes up through the plant, it will then evaporate off of the top of the plant and go back up into the atmosphere. And this will also happen off of a big body of water. It will evaporate the water up into the sky. And then the water will condense and form clouds, and then the whole process will repeat again. Make sure you understand this process. Next, we have the carbon cycle. Similar idea, but there is a little bit more going on in this one. So the trees and the animals are effectively the main feature of this. So one of the processes the tree does is photosynthesis and respiration, where it takes in the CO2 and then releases the oxygen back into the air. The horse itself is respiring, which puts CO2 into the air. The horse eats both the leaves and the soil or any plants on the floor, which is waste and decay, which puts carbon into the soil. And then fossil fuels that are also in the soil and have been for a long time, when they eventually get used and burnt, that puts CO2 back into the air. And then the plants take in the CO2 and then the horse will eat the plant and the whole cycle again continues similar to the water cycle. Finally, we have biodiversity. So high biodiversity is very important as it ensures ecosystems are stable. Biodiversity as a definition is simply the variety of different species of organisms on Earth or within an ecosystem. So, I mean, in the Earth, like humans couldn't survive alone without animals. Even little animals like bees are really, really important to help plants and flowers grow into things that we really need. There are, however, human actions that affect biodiversity. So things like waste production, deforestation and global warming are all destroying habitats for animals and plants that are effectively killing them off. And that sums up the end of the ecology topic and the end of the entire biology spec. So thank you very much for watching. Well done if you made it this far. Good luck in your exams and please like and subscribe if you want more.